Hello, I'm Mrs. Jansen. Let's draw a pattern zebra together. There's some interesting facts about zebras. Most of them live in Africa, and there are three main types or species, grievies, mountain, plains, also called common. The striped patterns of each type of zebra look different. The plains or common zebra is the only type with stripes on its stomach. No two zebras are exactly alike. The stripes act as camouflage to protect them from predators. Notice how the zebras in this image blend into the landscape. Our first vocabulary word is contrast, which refers to opposite our elements, such as lines, colors, textures and shapes. When opposite art elements are arranged in a work of art, it makes it look interesting. Opposite elements can be things like light and dark colors, rough and smooth textures, large and small shapes. A zebra is a great example of contrast in nature. We see contrast in color with black and white, we see contrast in texture between smooth and rough. Our next vocabulary word is pattern, which is art elements like lines, colors, and shapes that repeat to create a design. Our art today is influenced by historical American artist, Andy Warhol. He lived in the past from 1928 to 1987. He was an illustrator and he created ads for a magazine. He was known as the leader of pop art, which is the art of popular culture or the art of every day. He created a series of 32 Campbell soup can paintings. He created many different types of art, drawing, painting, printmaking, sculpture, video and film. He was also a writer. So here you see three works of zebras that he created. You definitely can see how he used his imagination. He loved animals and he created a series of endangered species prints to make people aware of animals that were in risk of extinction. These were made in 1983. Some people believe these were his most important works of art. So now it's time for us to create our own zebra. As we draw, I'd like you to remember that everyone draws in their own way and no one's looks exactly the same. And remember that no two zebras look exactly alike. You'll need a piece of paper and a pencil. You'll see the screen change so that we can draw together. So place your paper vertically or portrait style. And I'm gonna show you an example of where we're headed. We're gonna draw a zebra. We're first gonna draw uh, the zebra with just the outline or the contour lines. And then we're going to add the stripe pattern. Remember, they're all different. And then after that, we're gonna shade in the stripe pattern or color it in. And then our zebra is gonna show our unique creativity. We're gonna be adding our own ideas with patterns using lines, shapes, and colors. So let's get started. First, we're going to start at the bottom and about three finger spaces in, we're going to add a curved diagonal line. Now remember we're sketching and we want to use light pressure because we may change this line. So when we erase it, we don't want to see it. 
go to the left corner, three spaces in, and add another curved line. And now about three finger spaces up from the bottom of the paper, add a curved line like a smile and about leave about one finger space on the right and the left at the neck. Now we're going to go to the right side and we're going to add a curved line that might remind you of a stretched out letter S. And let's go to the left side. This time we're going to add a curved line that might remind you of a backwards stretched out letter S. After we've drawn this, at the left we're going to add a curved line like a rainbow and then in the center a curved line like a smile and back to a rainbow. We're creating the large nose of the zebra. And now let's go to the bottom and we're going to add the nostrils. It looks like a diagonal raindrop shape. Remember we're sketching and it's okay if the two nostrils don't look exactly alike. Now let's go underneath the nose and we're going to add the bottom of the mouth with a curved line like a smile. Now it's time to start the head of the zebra. So let's go back to the nose and at the bottom part of this stretched out curved line that looks like an S, let's add a diagonal line. And this diagonal line goes to about the middle of your paper. And let's go on this side. So uh, you can use your finger and go across about the middle of this backwards S-curve, add another diagonal line. And again, we'll refine or change these as we go. We're going to get the, the main shape. All right, so now that we've got part of the head drawn, uh, let's focus on the top of the head. So we're going to leave these two diagonal lines and about three finger spaces from the top in the middle of the paper, we're going to add a curved line like a rainbow. And now we're going to add the ears on the right with two curved lines first, one that goes up and then down. And let's add a curved line on the left, one side of the ear that goes up and then, then goes down. Now we're going to add curved lines on the inside of the ear going to add the mane. So the top center, add one straight vertical line, and then to the right, add curved lines. A little less than a finger space away, about three or four, and then go back to the center line and add the curved line in the opposite direction, about three or four. So this is the mane. And the mane has a lot of texture, so after you've added all those lines, let's add zigzag lines. Mm -hmm. 
So now that we've got the mane done, we're going to go to the base of the ear and we're going to add a curved line that might remind you of a stretched out backward C. And this is going to be for the eye. Now we want the eyes to be in the same place on the head, so as lightly as you can, dry horizontal line across the face of the zebra. At the top of that curved line and the bottom. So we're using these as guidelines. Um, some people call them construction lines because we're building a drawing. So now that we've got those two guidelines in place, we know we're going to be erasing them in a few minutes, but they're there to help us know where to place them. the outer curve of the eye. So go ahead and add that. It looks a lot like a stretched out. C. And now we're going to go back to the right eye. We're going to add a curved line that goes down. And now I'm going to measure this with my fingers. And it starts about two finger spaces at the top. And at the bottom, it's about three. So what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to make a dot where the three fingers measure and the two so that I can make these similar. It's okay if they're not exactly the same. And now I'll add a curved line to the bottom on each side. And now we can erase those guidelines in between. So now I'm going to go back inside this shape and I'm going to add another curved line that's going to be the upper eyelid to the zebra and a curved line on the left and now I'm going to add a curved line like a smile above the bottom curved line for the lower eyelid. And I'm going to add an oval. We're only going to see part of the oval. And this is the dark center of the zebra's eye. I'm going to add the same on this side. And we'll add shading to this later if you'd like. You can color the pupil in now. That'll be the dark center. Shade it in with your pencil. And you can add eyelashes. Creatures have eyelashes because they protect their eyes from dust and dirt. to go to the top of the eye and I'm going to add a curved line that goes down to the top of the nose. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And now I'm going to look at the curved line that I drew earlier and I'm going to decide to change it. I'm going to bring it in a little bit. And notice how I'm going to make it rounded with curved lines instead of those points. And now we've got our zebra drawn and it's time to start the stripe pattern. So remember the stripe pattern looks different on every zebra. Um, and this shows an example 
of one stripe pattern. So the main thing I'd like you to know is that in this example, I started down the center first with just a vertical line, and then I mapped out. What I did is add curved lines from the center, and those are above the eye. And then I used curved lines in the center. Notice how there's spaces in between all of them because we're going to use that empty negative space in between the stripes to add different shapes and colors to create patterns. And then I want you to notice the stripes on the neck. This is more of a curved line like a smile as it wraps around the body the front of the zebra and then I've only got one that can be complete and the second one is partial and notice the space in between so remember that all the stripes look different so I uh, let's get started on stripes I'm going to start with that vertical line that goes down the center and then I'm going to have a space from the top of the head. I'm going to bring a curved line to the eye. So the curve at the top of the eye is important. It helps to give the illusion that the zebra is 3D. And make sure you leave a large space in between and add another curved line. And about the same distance from the top, start the curved line on the left. And it's okay if they don't look exactly the same. Now we're going to go back and make them thicker. Remember we learned that the three main types each have their own stripe pattern, but there are no two zebras exactly alike. So now that I've got the stripes done on the top, now I'm going to create almost a diamond effect, but it's more of a curved line around the edges. And I'm going to add to these lines. The important thing is that you need to have space in between to add lines and shapes. So as you add the stripes, think about one side of a diamond. And this curved line that we attach the eye to the nose, I'm going to make this thicker. This is going to be a stripe. two finger spaces down I'm going to make a curved line like a smile. I'm going to add that on both sides and then a diagonal line 
that goes back to the center. Now we'll go back and we'll make this thicker. lines that go in from the edge of the face. And remember, these are just our beginning lines. And now I'm going to add the stripes on the neck. Now, when I look at the neck that I drew, I think I'd like this neck wider. So I'm just going to add to it now before I start the stripes. I'm going to add this curve like a smile. I want it to look like it's going around the front of the zebra. And I'm going to make these wider. And the next stripes are going to be a curve, but they go off the page at the bottom. going to shape those in. I'll be coloring them, those in later. So we've got our zebra drawn, and now it's time for you to use your imagination and add color. So when you look at this zebra, um, I'd like to point out the nose. So notice how Using black crayon, you can outline the shape for the nose and the nostrils. And here's where you'll use your crayon differently with different pressures to create lights and darks or values. So add the darkest value inside the nostrils. And then you'll notice that I added a darker value, almost an oval shape on the outside of those upside down raindrops to make those nostrils look more rounded. And then you will outline the entire shape for the nose and that curved line for part of the mouth. And then you will add color to this more of in a curved or horizontal direction. And notice how I we want to change the pressure from light to dark. Notice how we can still see the texture of the paper, and that's showing us the texture that's rough on the zebra's nose. Let's talk about the eyes. You can use the dark uh, brown or black crayon to color in the pupil, and then a brown, a dark brown for around the pupil. And then you can outline the eyelashes with your black crayon. And then you can go back, outline the whole contour, the outline of the zebra. And then you can outline and add black to the stripes. 
choose any color that you'd like for the inside of the zebra's ears and then you get to decide what color or colors you'd like to add to the mane. We often see black in the zebra's mane, so you may want to make sure that you have some black stripes, but that's your choice. And now when you go back to create patterns, think about different shapes or lines and use your crayon differently. I first drew different shapes using a little heavier pressure and then I used light pressure as I colored over the, the shapes or the lines that I added. So this is your art. You can use your creativity and you can add any lines or shapes that you'd like. Remember when it comes to the ears, you're choosing any color you'd like. And I hope you're using your favorite colors. Remember to always use what you know about color when you're making your choices. So you want to remember colors that make each other stand out, those complementary colors. If you're using a blue and you really want that blue to stand out, make sure you have an orange nearby. It's complement. If you have a yellow and you really want that yellow to stand out, remember that purple is its complement. If you'd like to use a green in your artwork and you'd like that stripe to really stand out, add a color that's in the red family close to the green. And when you're all finished, remember to color the background. And the color in the background can be any color that you'd like. This is your artwork. I hope you've enjoyed drawing a pattern zebra today.